What is Maqam Ibrahim? What is Musalla? What is the Adhan? What is Salatul Jumu'ah? Assalamu alaikum. I'm Moses and today we're going to talk about these four things. They say Maqam Ibrahim is the Kaaba in Mecca. They also say that Salatul Jumu'ah is a ritual prayer that is mentioned by the Quran that is held on a ritual day that we today call Friday. Did Allah really say that in the Quran? This, I think, is the oft-repeated question throughout the series. We know what people say. We know what the so-called scholars and people of the cloth say. But is that what Allah said as well or not? A quick reminder, and I won't spend too much time on it. This is the 10th video of the series called Salat in the Quran, which you can find on the channel. Let's continue. Proposition number one. In the Quran, maqam, maqam with a fatha or zabr as we call it in Urdu, on the letter Meme means a non-physical station slash position. Maqam means a non-physical station position. Now this word Maqam appears in 15 ayats of the Quran and all of those ayats have been displayed in here. Maqam with a Dhamma or a Pesh on the top of the letter Meme however appears four times in the Quran and all of those four instances are in front of you as well. I think a legitimate question that one should ask is well, what is the difference between the two spellings? Is maqam the same as muqam? Now I looked at the translations that we've had done for these two different terms throughout the Quran and I was surprised to see that I did not see a lot of distinction being made between the two. Maqam and muqam were, well the meanings for those two terms were used interchangeably as if they were synonyms, as if they were the same thing, as if maqam and muqam have no difference. I saw the same sort of ambiguity in the traditional dictionaries as well. And here's a very short sampling of what I found. If we were to look at the Al-Muhit, well, Al-Maqam Madir al qajamain which kind of corresponds to what we find in Lane as well, where he says Maqam is the place of the feet, a standing place. Muqam, on the other hand, he understands to be a place of stationing and both a place of continuance, stay, residence or abode. However, if I look at this particular translation, I find Qama Maqamahu as an example being given, which is he took his place or represented him. The son of Arab, well that doesn't really help me either. Truly understand what is the difference between those two terms and specifically how does the Quran use them? What I've done is I've looked at all of the ayahs where Maqam and Muqam are used in order to see how the Quran, how the Quran in its own lisan uses these two terms to see if we can understand the meaning of these specific terms. Maqam, as I've said in the proposition up ahead, is a non-physical station or status. Let's go through all of those ayats well quickly. The first two ayat has Maqam Ibrahim. We're going to cover this shortly, so I'm going to skip these two ayat in here. The ayat after that, Maqamuha, Yaqumani Maqamuha, take someone else's role, someone else's position. Next ayat, In kana kabura alaykum maqami, my station, or presence due to it. Continuing on, لِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامِي وَخَافَ وَعِيدِي This maqami returns back to the majesty of Allah. Allah talks about His own majesty, about His station. This is not a physical presence that we're talking about. This ayah here is the one we talked about in the last video. أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا That your Lord gives to you a position that is praiseworthy, a station that is praiseworthy. Continuing on, خَيْرٌ مَقَامًا Station, position. Wa kunuzin wa maqamin kareem. Station, state of being. This ayah that comes after that, this I would like to explore more because I don't believe that in this particular ayah there's any physical station, any physical sitting of a person that's being talked about. We're going to continue on. Lahu maqamun ma'loom. Position, status. Wa zuru'in wa maqamin kareem. Same meaning. In al mutaqina fi maqamin amin. Same. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Whoever, whoever fears the station, the non-physical station of his Rabb. وَأَمَّ مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ Same meaning. Now let's contrast this with Muqam. Dhamma on Meem or Pesh as we call that in Urdu Hindi. Muqam in the Quran is a place where one is within. إِنَّهَا سَأَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا A place, a state that one is within. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا حَسُنَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا Same meaning, same understanding. If we looked at the context of this area as well, there's a ghurfa, a room, 
that is being talked about. With qalat ta'ifat minhum, ya ahla yathrib, la muqama lakum, a physical place to be in. Let's continue on to the proposition number two. What is musalla? Musalla is a way of doing a salah based on derived from Ibrahim's station, the non-physical station for Ibrahim. Musalla is an interesting term because it only appears once throughout the Mus'haf. And as a result of that, it is prone to hijack. I mean, you could apply any meaning whatsoever, if you wanted to, based upon external sources, to take this word to become anything that you desire. And that is what we have seen. So Musalla has become, in Urdu Hindi, the actual piece of cloth that you put out on the ground if you want to do a ritual prayer. Musalla in translations, if you were to find, this is understood to be either the physical standing point upon which Ibrahim stood and actually built a physical house of Lord, or it refers to the Kaaba in the city Makkah. The question that we have to confront here is, well, how do we understand the meaning of this term when it only appears once within the Qur'an, if we cannot rely on secondary literature, including the dictionaries? So, how do we derive, understand the meaning of Musalla then? By looking at the context that this term appears in, and by using well-established words by the Qur'an and the terms as keys for understanding this. This is not rocket science. This should not be a difficult question to answer. This should not be a difficult thing to get through. Having looked at some of the context and having made those propositions, let's look at this very famous ayah to see whether the Qur'an is really talking about a physical place that we should point towards five times a day whenever we wish to offer this ritual prayer. The ayah in question is 2.125, where we find both terms, Maqam Ibrahim and Musalla. What I have done, just like I've been doing before, on the right hand side are the ayat before and ayah after the ayah in question that we're going to look into. What I've also done is I've tried translating or grabbing the gist of the ayat before and the ayah after, so we have got good context in order to understand this particular ayah that we're going to explore. So we're not looking at something in isolation, but we get a chance to really see how everything fits in together. We bind ourselves to the context. We bind ourselves to the meaning of the terms that the Qur'an has established clearly. We'll start from 120 with the gist of those ayats until we get to 125. Certain groups are never happy until you follow their way of understanding. 121. Those who believe in the Al-Kitab, not a scripture, not Al-Qur'an. Those who believe in the Al-Kitab, study it as it deserves. 122. Bani Israel favored over the realms and asked to remember the ni'mah of Allah's deen. 123. Reminder of a period where each nafs is to answer for itself. 124. Ibrahim made an imam, leader, someone in front, example for the nas. Now, by the way, he is not someone who either started this physical hajj, nor was he the one who went on on a smashing spree to destroy physical idols for a nation who believed in them. Having established the context, now we're going to look at this ayah to see what the Qur'an says when it talks about Maqam Ibrahim and Musalla. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَهِيمَ مُسَلَّى وَأَحِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ أَنْ طَهِرَ بَيْتِيَ لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ And when we made the bayt, the collection of established knowledge, practice, ordained by Allah, a place of oft returning and peace for the people. And you all are to take from the maqam, station, stature, outlook, way of Ibrahim, a way of doing salah, two way positive connections. And we ahidna appointed Ibrahim and Ismail that they both cleanse my bayt, Allah's ordained system knowledge, for the ta'ifin, those who come repeatedly, and the aqifin, those who ponder, and those who submit and carry out Allah's orders. Bayt is not a house. It's not a house of cement. It's not a house of bricks. It is not the house of Allah. Astaghfirullah. Allah does not have, nor does he need, a physical house made on earth for him. Maqam Ibrahim is the stature, the outlook, the way, the station of Ibrahim. Musalla is a way of doing this salah in accordance and derived from Maqam Ibrahim. We're going to look at one more ayah to complete out the context. 126. Ibrahim asked for this ballad to be made peaceful for those who join it, belong to it. Let's continue. Proposition number three. 
There is no ritual Friday Salah in the Quran. While we're at it, I'm going to add one more proposition. Proposition number four. The Quran has no adhan as a ritual calling for ritual prayers. I'll repeat that. Despite the fact that we hear, we listen to a two-minute chant five times a day that calls people towards a ritual prayer. The Quran makes no mention of that whatsoever. Surah 62 of the Quran, Surah Al-Jum'ah, that is the surah from which they say that we derive and we find a ritual prayer to be held on a day we call today the Friday. When I read this surah, A, I find nothing like that, nor do I find any adhan, as we'll talk shortly, nor do I find a ritual prayer. But what I find is something that's quite surprising and not something that we would expect. What I find is a condemnation for the qawm of Nabi Muhammad and a reminder. And this is quite strange, quite strange, if one was to look at the whole surah. The whole surah is, is not big. It's only 11 ayat. So what I've done is I've put all of those ayat of the whole surah on the right hand side so we can see the whole surah to understand the context and the condemnation and the reminder that Allah gives to the qawm of Nabi Muhammad. I will repeat, this surah is not at all what you expect it to be. Let's start from the first ayah. Everything obeys Allah's orders. Tasbih is not a ritual, something that you do. It's not a ritual act of piety. For those who speak Urdu, Hindi, there's a video for Tasbih that you can go and watch. So everything obeys Allah's laws, Allah's orders, Allah's commands, Allah's framework. Number two, he sent a messenger within those who did not have ilm of Allah's system to relay to them his signs and to cleanse them and to teach them the Al-Kitab and Al-Hikmah. There is no talk, by the way, of As-Salah al harakia or ritual prayer being mentioned at all as a purpose for this Rasul. Also, Al-Hikmah is not the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad. Continuing on, number three, and others to come in the future, like us, like me, like you, and for the generations to come, for the Quran's first recipient. This, number four, is a very key, very key ayah, and I'm going to return to it. Number four, that is the fadl, blessing, bounty of Allah. What is? The knowledge of the Al-Kitab, his ayat, Al-Hikmah, that the Rasul is to bring to Al-Ummiyun, those who did not have this knowledge before. Ummi does not mean someone who cannot read or somebody who cannot write. The qawm of Nabi Muhammad was not Ummi because they were all jahil, because they could not read or write. Nabi Muhammad himself was not an Ummi because of that. They were from the Ummiyun because they could not they did not have the knowledge of Allah's system. Nabi Muhammad was not an illiterate man. Let's not blame him. Let's not cast him down. Let's not belittle him. Number five. Example is being given of a previous people who did not follow the orders of Allah given to them. Terrible are those who kathaba denied Allah's sign. Now what is really surprising, what is really surprising, is that if we go look at the ayah, مَثَلُوا الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ We find the same pattern, وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكَ وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكَ And your qawm, O Muhammad, as the first recipient of the Qur'an, your, your qawm كَذَّبَ Your qawm denied it. Your qawm denied the Al-Qur'an just as the other people who did that before as well. We are being given in this ayah a method, an example of a previous people who kathabu the ayat that were given to them, as was done by the qawm of Nabi Muhammad as well. I hope you're kind of getting an idea what I'm talking about. What we're finding so far in this surah has got nothing to do with the ritual prayer. Nothing to do. There's no tamheed, there's no muqaddama, there's no introduction, there's no framework being created in here that will lead us towards a ritual prayer. Let's continue. Number six. It's a challenge for those who call themselves guided. Seven, reminder that they will back away. Eight, reminder that the return is to Allah. Now let's look at the ayah from which they say we can derive and we find a ritual prayer. Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, idha nudiya lissalah min yawmi al-jumu'ah fasa'u ila dhikri Allah wa dharu al-bay'ah thalikum khayrul lakum in kuntum ta'lamun fa idha qudiyat al-salah fantashiru fil ard وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ O oh, you who have believed and established spread peace, when you are called, not, there's no adhan there, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ 
when you are called for the formation of two-way connections in the time period duration of communal gathering duty. It's not Yom al Juma. It is Yom al Jumua when you are called for the formation of connections, positive strengthening connections in the time duration that has been set aside for communal gathering. Then strive towards the remembrance, prominence of Allah's system and leave aside deal making. That is good for you if you knew. Then when this instance of the two-way formation of connections is done, then spread in the ard and seek the blessing of Allah. Wabtaghu min fadlillah and seek the fadl of Allah. What is the fadl of Allah? We don't have to go far. We find this being talked about in the fourth ayah of the very same surah. Dhalika fadlullah. What is that fadl? That he sent to the Ummiyeen, a messenger, who recited, who gave to them his ayat, Allah's ayat, and taught them the Al-Kitab and the Hikmah. That is the fadl of Allah. Let's continue. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And strive greatly for the prominence of Allah's system, so that all of you can become successful. Nudiya li salah does not mean adhan for the as that we find in translations. Yawm al-Jumu'ah is not the day of Friday. And we're not being asked to go and do some ritual form of dhikr, as in certain things that people do, depending upon the sect that they belong to, once you've done your salah. There's nothing like that. Now let's continue on to the last ayah of this surah. And as I said, this ayah as well is one that makes you think, it makes you ponder. It should stop you right in your tracks. And yet some continue to get distracted and desert you, even though what's with Allah is the best. What is the surah talking about? The surah has got a very simple message. Everything in the universe, everything that you see or that you do not see, all of them follow Allah's laws. Allah has a sunnah. Allah has a certain framework. Things happen in accordance to patterns and in accordance to rules and laws that he has set in play. He has now sent a messenger with a message for those who did not have Allah's message of the Al-Kitab before. We had this message in front of us. We and the people who received the Qur'an are being told about people before them who denied this message in the ayat of Allah. There's a reminder that these ayat are fadl, bounty from Allah. This is the blessing. There's a challenge being given to those who say, oh, we are the ones who are guided. They are not guided, nor do they themselves believe it. And then we are being told, those who follow the message of this Qur'an and spread peace, that whenever you are to be called for a duty, that helps the society, that helps a group, that establishes the laws of Allah, that spreads peace, that spreads your ilm, that spreads knowledge, that spreads musawa, that spreads justice in your society and those for those around you, then you should leave your own individual deal-makings aside and work towards the remembrance of Allah's system because that is what is good for you. And whenever that duty is done, don't forget about it. When you do go and spread out in the earth, continue to seek the blessings of Allah. That is the fadl that you are to seek. Continue to strive for the prominence of Allah's system. That is the way to become successful. And despite all of that, there's another warning. The ayah, the last ayah of this surah finishes with a warning. That despite all of this, despite the fact that there was a Rasul, Nabi Muhammad, a physical person in front of those people, there were those who continued to get distracted and desert that Rasul, that Nabi, even when he was alive in front of them. وَكَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكْ كَذَّبَ بِهِ قَوْمُكْ Just as the people of Rasul Nabi Muhammad denied him, كَذَّبَ him, we find the same thing be done about the people before them as well. Al-Qawm الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ Sunnatullah doesn't change. There are always those who will find in front of them the signs, the ayat of Allah, and by their own choice, they will deny them. Are you from them? Am I from them? Do, you, do, I, do we find others around us who do so? Did you find, did you find any ritual prayer here? Did you find any, any gathering that's being organized on a Friday with two raka led by an imam, with adhan done before and adhan done after, and a whole set of rituals that you have to follow when you do the khutbah, etc., etc. Do you find anything like that in this surah? Is there any, is there any Friday prayer here? I didn't see it. I don't see it. Let's summarize this video. Proposition number one. In the Quran, maqam means a non-physical station position. 
Number two, musalla is a way of doing a salah based on derived from Ibrahim station. Proposition number three, there is no ritual Friday salah in the Quran. Number four, the Quran has no adhan as a ritual calling for ritual prayers. Now this next bit, I don't know if you have thought about it, but I argue based upon the Quran that Nabi Ibrahim was no terrorist who went about smashing sacred physical idols for a nation who believed in them. That is no example for you or for me or for our children to follow. If today we did that, if today I did that, I entered a Hindu temple and smashed their idols saying, look, they can't defend themselves, thus you Hindus should stop worshipping them. I'd be called a terrorist, you'd be called a terrorist, and I and we, we would all be put into jail, where we rightfully belong. That is not what the Nabi Ibrahim did. If you speak Urdu Hindi, I've done a video on that, on what Nabi Ibrahim actually did. I encourage you to go and watch it. Also, Nabi Ibrahim did no physical hajj. I've done a video of that in Urdu as well. Bait of Allah is not a physical building made of bricks that also contains toilets. Allah does not need a house. Allah is beyond all of this. Surah al jumuah does not talk about any physical prayer. On the other hand, it's a, it's a warning to the qawm of Nabi Rasul Muhammad, which ended up denying him, to adhere to the as-salah, despite, despite all of the weaknesses that they had. Last ayah for today. وَقَالَ rasul And the Rasul said, Ya Rabbi, O my Lord, إِنَّ قَوْمِ إِتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا My Lord, my people have abandoned this Qur'an.